Hey guys, so we're going to be deploying our React app to Netlify today. This is one of my favorite places to deploy websites and frontends to now, just because they have such a great free plan and also it's really easy to get up and working and they have so many features that are available to you. So if you haven't used this before, you're going to want to go ahead and create an account with them and then also install the command line tools which we'll be using. So you just need to run this command right here. Um, and now before we actually go ahead and deploy this to Netlify, we need to make a few changes to our front end. Uh, the first is the uh, apollo.ts file in our website. So right now we have hard-coded what the server URL is. This works for development, but when we're in production, we want this to be pointed at a different server because it can't access localhost. So what we're going to do is make this into an environment variable. So I'm going to say process.env.react underscore app underscore server URL. And we're going to just use that. So now we need to set this environment variable so that in, in development it's here and in production it's a different uh, value. Now you may be wondering why I prefixed it with react underscore app underscore. Um, this is something from how create react app works. You have to use this underscore. Uh, or at least prefix it with React app. Uh, if you want to read more, I'll link this. Uh, and then how we're going to actually do this is there's lots of little different prefixes that you can add. So we're going to be using a .env file and we're going to be using this in development. Uh, so you could create a .env.development also. I guess we could uh, do that, for example. So what's going to happen is we're going to create one env file for uh, development and one for production. And then when we do, if we look at our package.json, if we do start, it's going to be using the development environment. If we use build, it's going to be using the production environment. So let's go ahead and create .env. I guess we can create a development version. And we want to just call this exactly what we, oops, exactly what we used here. And we're going to copy that. All right, and then we're going to create a production one. Dot env dot production. And by the way, this is and I don't want I don't want this in the source file. This is totally okay to share with people, so uh, feel free to do that. So this is my server. So whether you deploy this to Daku and DigitalOcean or Heroku, pick whatever URL you want. I'm going to use my Heroku one. So that's what I'm going to make requests for when I have this in production. Now, the environment variables work a little bit different when doing it in a website versus a server. This, these are not secrets. Uh, and when you actually publish your site, nothing is secret. Anyone can look through your source code and whatnot. So it is OK to, uh, you can check these into source code if you want to. Um, you don't have to. It's kind of a choice. Uh, but they're not secrets, so that's also why I'm showing them and I haven't shown, for example, the server creating them. But yeah, so we have that set up now. So that'll work and that'll be good when we deploy this. And our front end is pretty much good to go. We don't need to touch anything else. So we're gonna create a, a script, kind of how we did with the server to automate deployments. So I'm gonna create a deploy um, web.sh. And we can copy this first part right here. Oops. Um, but for us, we're going to create yarn build web. So if we come over to our package.json, we can add a script. And we're going to say build web. And now instead of ab server, it's going to be ab web, which just, I just want to verify I did name the package.json. Yep, so it's going to be using this name right here. All right, so it's going to build common and then it's going to build web. And at the end of this, when this is finished, and actually this might be good to just walk through first, and then we'll create this automation script. So before we can even deploy this also, we need to create a app on Netlify. So we're going to say Netlify create. And if this is your first time running this, you may have to uh, log in first. So after you create, there's going to be uh, it's going to create a .netlify file 
I would recommend going to your dot git ignore and uh, ignoring that so dot netlify because this is going to be kind of not your credentials but the unique ID to your website uh, and you don't really want other people to have access to that um, and then after that we're going to say uh, netlify deploy so those are really the only the two commands and it's going to ask you the path to deploy and this is where your built HTML, CSS, JS, that stuff you're going to deploy. So we haven't actually created that yet, so I'm just going to control C this. Um, we can go yarn build web. So we'll let this run. This will build the uh, common directory and also build our website. Now when it builds this website, what's going to happen is it's going to output HTML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, just all compiled out, and that's what we're going to upload. And I'll show you that when this is done. All right, so it finished building, and if we go to web, and there's going to be now a folder called build. And if you take a look at that, uh, you can see there's just an index.html, and now everything is all like squished together um, or minified. You can see there's a static folder. You can see there's JavaScript, CSS, and uh, this is your JS code. It's all here's your React code right here, all minified, uh, and all that fun stuff. And so this that's all minified in regular JavaScript. This is what you can deploy to Netlify. So now when I say Netlify deploy, I tell it what directory. So we're gonna say dot slash packages slash web slash build. So that's the folder where all the stuff is. Uh, and so now it's just gonna push it up and it should give us a URL. So nice, so now I can go to this URL and I can view my website. Now, I don't think we actually have anything on the home page, but we should have a register form. Um, oh, yes. This is something I forgot we need to set up. Okay, so the reason you're getting this is because of how React Router works. So we're using routing on the front end, and so Netlify doesn't know about that. So what we need to do is set up a little thing. So inside our public folder, we're gonna add underscore redirects. And in redirects, we're going to say slash star slash index.html200. So what this does is this is something that Netlify knows about. And uh, we're saying match every single route. So for example, if we go to slash register, it should redirect back to the index.html file. And it should say 200 that the request worked. Um, so if you do get this problem where you can't find your page when you go to register, that's why. You want to just set that up. And now, no matter what page you go to, you should be redirected back to index.html. And now this little hack or this little change, this redirection, um, gets React Router to work. And that's what we're using for our routing. All right, so we made a change to this. So we're going to have to redeploy. So Let's go ahead and finish off that script that we made. So yarn build, and then we just run netlify deploy. Now the nice thing about netlify is it saves all that stuff in the .netlify little file there. So uh, when we run this, we don't have to actually re-put in the directory, for example, to our build file. It just knows. So what I'm going to do now is just change mod, the deploy web, and then I'm just going to run deploy web. All right, so that finished deploying again. Now we can come back over here and refresh. And so now it should redirect this back and then we see the register page, perfect. Now if we actually tried to register right now, it actually should fail. Now the reason for that is in our server, uh, if we come back to that and in our start server, we have cores set. Uh, and you'll notice in the cores, we have process.env dot front end host right so if we look that's actually one of our uh, environment variables the example right so we don't have this set right now what we want to do is set it to this thing right here all right so you want to copy this bit and just like that and you do not want this slash register at the end so not in dot env dot example so you want to open up dot environment dot prod and you want to put this value in. Now I'm not going to do that right now because it'll 
it'll uh what's it called i'll show you all my secrets and i don't want to do that so go ahead and put that value in now you don't want to put this exact value you want to put the value that netlify gave you and then redeploy your back end now when you redeploy the back end what's going to happen is it's going to use that front end host and uh, it, you now should be uh, the back end should know what requests it should be get so it should expect requests from this place right here and uh, we can actually show you what the error would be or the error looks like if this of course is not correctly set because right now I don't have it set so if I do bob at bob.com and we can put our password in and we register we get this uh, response flight access control allow origin junk so yeah to handle that you just need to pass in the value the other thing is if you don't want to use environment variables you can just hard code this in and maybe do it based off of the node environment or whatnot but I would recommend updating your environment file redeploying and then this should work alright so I went ahead and redeployed the backend with the cores with the correct URL and I'm now going to copy a 10 minute email and register a user and if we take a look at the response, we see registers null, so it was able to register perfectly. Uh, and we should get an email over there. Before we go and check, I want to talk about one thing, and that's this little error that's right here. Uh, so we're getting this and this little this little warning about the password, and that's because we are not on we're just on HTTP instead of HTTPS. So we can actually just switch over, uh, and if we do, we're able to basically that the little warning goes away. But we're going to have a cores problem. So let me show you. So mess this guy up, try registering. You're going to get that same error that we were getting before. And the reason we're getting this is because we specified uh, the URL uh, which the server accepts. But we did not have an HTTPS in there. So if you want to support HTTPS, you're going to have to add that to your cores. So just be mindful of that. Uh, and I would actually recommend probably supporting just I would support HTTPS over HTTP so that's what I'm going to change mine to but just wanted to warn you guys be mindful that uh, when you're doing this you might get those problems um, and sweet we did get our email um, and so the next thing we really want to do is also when we click on this confirm email is we should come back we should get redirected back to our website and whatnot but that's it for deploying things to Netlify